Hey there everybody. So today I'm going to go over my first experience using Easel. When I first bought my CNC machine, Easel was not available and my first experiences with it were in its early alpha and beta days when it was nowhere near the polished product that it is now and I was having difficulty just getting it to work with my machine before. This time I had a much better experience with it. You'll notice here that this is my second attempt at carving this. That is because the underside of this board was already carved before and is not the same thickness throughout. Uh, it caused one of the pieces to come loose because the tabs were below the cutting surface. And to compensate, the rest of these pieces are not carved deep enough. Uh, so it actually doesn't cut all the way through at all, let alone the tabs. Other than that though, the cam component of this worked flawlessly. Um, it required almost no configuration, I just had to tell Easel that I had an older uh, controller and it just went from there. Far more user-friendly than something like Universal G-Code Sender or, or some of the more advanced open source tools that are available. So the design I'm using is uh, a Veroni or Voroni uh, object using the built-in tool within Easel. Um, really easy to use, pretty much exactly what I wanted it to do. You can adjust the, the number of objects, the branch size, all that stuff fairly easily. You can even do different shapes other than a circle. And so here I think that I'm adjusting the depth. And I noticed that it's not reflecting on the preview. So I was a little bit confused and it took me a while to figure out that when you put in the number for the depth adjustment, you have to either click outside of the box or press enter to have that value saved. If you just click away, then it isn't. Uh, and so here I'm trying to adjust like, you know, the inside the lines, outside the lines to see if that'll make any difference. If that would be causing some sort of problem. It wasn't, none of that stuff really matters other than its intended function. You can see here, I finally figured it out and uh, the preview is reflecting correctly. Because every machine is different, I'm not gonna go over the actual carve process. I will say that the bit that I used was not listed in here um, and I chose basically just the closest thing to it that I could see there. If I were to customize the feeds and speeds, I would probably have gotten better quality of your performance with the bit I was using, but as it is, it worked fine other than me underestimating the depth of the piece. So you can see here that it isn't going all the way through except for my first attempt. I tried to cut this out using a flush cut saw because my coping saw has a broken blade and I haven't gotten around to get a replacement. The flush cut saw, especially since it was too thick, it did not work well at all. Not the right tool for the job, by any means. So I decided to use the band saw, which, you know, is, is a better idea than the uh, flush cut saw, but as veteran bandsaw users will note, I am cutting this out and it's going to leave me with a circular product, uh, which is very difficult to cut on the bandsaw. It would have been much smarter for me to just put the fence up and then cut the back off of it first while it was still attached to the board. And basically just uh, saved the circular part for last. But I didn't do that. And that left me with quite a dilemma. So cutting a circle is dangerous because it wants to roll forward as the teeth pull down on the object. Uh, that can cause it to pull the piece in rapidly, faster than you're expecting, uh, including with your fingers wrapped around it. So do not ever do this. This is super dangerous. 
I managed to leave this video with all my fingers intact, so if you're squeamish, don't worry, I'm not going to chop off a finger in this video. So as I was cutting that out, I realized that that was just a terrible idea. I at least put the fence on so I could cut straight, but that's still not very smart. Um, the proper thing to do would be to cut it before it was a circle, but the next best thing is probably what I'm doing here, uh, using a clamp or something that is not my fleshy fingers to <laughs> uh, hold on to the piece. Uh, however, because of the way I was holding it, and uh, I don't know, possibly just because I was rushing, I basically cut a spiral into the, into the back of it. It wasn't a straight cut all the way through, this piece really was just a test run anyway. The, uh, the final one that I'm going to make, I'm intending to be much larger than this. So um, this is really just a dry run. I, I wasn't all that disappointed that it didn't come out perfectly on the first try. But uh, I decided to go through with the whole process anyway, just in case I discovered any other pitfalls so I don't make any mistakes with the real thing. Uh, as you can see here, I'm gluing up that spiral. Pretty straightforward operation. Now that that's done, uh, I'm going to clean up the edge, get rid of some of the excess glue, and put a chamfer around the outside with this block plane. I highly recommend the uh, 3M plastic sandpaper or rubberized sandpaper that can bend and flex. Uh, it works really, really well. Um, I use it all the time. I would, in almost any circumstance, recommend it over a regular flat piece of sandpaper if you're using your bare hands to be sanding something. And so this cleanup process is probably slower and more tedious than it has to be. And part of that is because this piece is now glued together in a bunch of spots um, and is on one side very thin and on the other side much thicker. Uh, so I had to be extra careful to not just break it into a bunch of pieces. Um, holding it in the vise definitely helps. This sanding tool from Rockler is super handy. I highly recommend it. Um, I think it was under $5 and it was like $3.99 for like a six pack of the replacement sanding belts for it. Um, I use it all the time, especially when I'm uh, hand carving small details. Uh, it can get into places that I really have not been able to find a, another way to get into with sandpaper. So that's the final product, uh, at least for this test run. Uh, I'll post another video when I decide to make the real thing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. I'm really new to making videos, so that helps a lot. Have a wonderful day.